Case IH Axle Flow 250 Series Combine Operation Guide. In this video, we shall be looking along the left side of the combine, its features, access, and maintenance. Before any work or inspection is carried out on the combine, please ensure that the engine is switched off and the batteries are isolated. The guards have high speed transport locks. These need to be released and stored in the unlock position. Open both guards. The guards latches need to be released with a pin or small rod. They have secondary safety latch, which then needs to be released. Gas struts hold the guards open. Looking across the left-hand side of the combine, virtually all hydraulic pipes can be removed and replaced individually without disturbing any other. However, accurately mark the position of the clamps and be sure of correctly repositioning them upon replacement. On this end of the engine, the PTO gearbox is located. From here, all mechanical drives are taken and the hydraulic pumps are mounted. Check the gearbox oil level daily. From the gearbox, there are two drive shafts. Very visible is the drive shaft to the feeder and header. And between the engine and grain tank is the drive shaft to the three speed rotor gearbox. The shaft and universal joints to the feeder and header need greasing every 300 hours, and the support bearings need grease every 100 hours. See the grease chart for assistance. The remaining drives on this side are belt or belt and chain drive. Tensions need to be checked on all belts and chains every 50 hours using the spring length indicator plates on the tension arms. Please note that accepting the feeder and grain elevator all chains should be lubricated at the end of each working day. The chain will be warm and the oil will penetrate the links to provide excellent protection and lubrication. The feeder and grain elevator chain can be lubricated at the end of the season or before any length of storage. Depending upon the combine specification, there is either one or two drive belts and chains forward of the PTO gearbox driving the unloading system. Only the standard unloading system has a 300 hour grease point. Excepting the dual system unload auger chain, drives have spring length indicator plates. The dual system unload auger chain needs tightening to be snug on the sprockets. With a single belt and chain, the unloading system starts and stops as one unit. With a dual belt and chain system, the unload auger starts momentarily before the cross augers and stops vice versa. During unload, the cross augers can be switched off independently to better control the speed of unloading, for example when grain nears the top of the trailer. This switching is done on the in-cab multifunction handle. In both cases, you will find unloading drive shear bolts on the flanges with a few spares available. If the augers have become jammed, a shear bolt will break. Manually release the blockage and replace the shear bolt accordingly. Unloading auger access panels are located at the base of the tank and lift auger. Open these panels for cleaning and washout as necessary. If fitted, the unloading auger needs to be unfolded for work and folded for transport. This is realised using the switch in the cab. Likewise, during transport, you must ensure that the unloading chute is folded down. This is automatic in the road mode. When unloading, the chute can be moved up and down to adjust the final throw of the crop into the cart. This is achieved by using the multifunction handle shift button and unload out in button. The chute will automatically be raised completely when folded alongside the combine. The final belts coming from the PTO gearbox are the belts to the choppers. 
The choppers are always working as soon as the combine threshing and cleaning system is engaged. The two belts coming forward at an approximate 45 degree downward angle drive the integral chopper and intermediate shaft through to the right hand side of the combine. The integral chopper has a two speed selector on the input shaft, selectable from within the cab or from the switch in the toolbox. Select high speed for chopping operations and low speed for swathing operations. The outer large pulley is used for the slow speed and intermediate drive shaft. The chopper shaft bearings need grease every 100 hours. This area needs blowing down and cleaning every day or more by using compressed air. If fitted, the extra chop or ready cop chopper is driven via the rearward belts and idler pulleys at an approximate 45 degree downward angle. Again, all belt tensions need checking every 50 hours. The only other drive to be found on this side of the combine is a belt from the returns cross auger to the cleaning shoe flywheel. There is a grease point on the idler arm needing grease every 100 hours. See the grease chart for assistance and check the belt tension every 50 hours. From the ground level, pull down on the step release lever and swing the steps round to either working or transport position. From the platform, use the foot pedal to do likewise. The cab air filters need periodic cleaning and the windscreen washer bottle will need an occasional top up. Release and lift the panel at the top of the steps to gain access to them both. The pre-filter will need cleaning. Open the trap door and clean any dirt and dust from this area using a suitable brush and then replace the door. Pull the yellow slider on the cylinder and remove the cover with a twist then pull. Remove the filter element and clean with high volume, low pressure air blown from inside out. An air line connection can be found at the front of the cab or down by the tool cupboard. The twin batteries are located in a dust resistant housing at shoulder level. They are wired in such a way to give 12 volt supply during work, but 24 volts to the starting system via the 24 volt relay. If battery charging is required, be sure to read the operator's manual to avoid incorrect connections and the risk of damage to the electronics. Occasionally, remove the covers and blow out the debris using compressed air. The batteries should be isolated at the end of each day using the isolator switch as shown. Just above the battery isolator is a 12 volt power socket for use with an inspection light or similar instrument. Also the under guard floodlight switch and the interior over sieve work light switch are located here. Just above the batteries near the frame of the combine is a small hydraulic ram. This ram controls the position of the integral chopper fixed knives and has up to five positions. Out for swathing, 25% in, 50%, 75% and 100% in for chopping. It is limited to out and 25% in when used in conjunction with the extra chop. If your grain tank sample suddenly deteriorates, it could be that the fan is being slowed by an ingress of debris. This can be caused by downhill surging or braking sharply whilst in work, or the pre-sieve open too wide, causing crop to fall into the fan housing, restricting the airflow. Should this happen, check and empty the fan housing. Located behind the cleaning shoe flywheel is the drop floor locking lever. Remove the pin and pull the lever rearward through 180 degrees. The fan housing floor will open simultaneously. It can now be cleaned out using a suitable bristle brush and checked for any fan damage. When cleaned, close the floor and begin work once more. There are numerous controls on this side of the combine, the most visible being the rotor speed selector. Generally, number three will enable a range from 720 to 1180 RPM for serials. Number two will give 410 to 780 RPM for rape and pulses. And number one will give 220 to 440 RPM for sunflower and other delicate crops. Also externally, 
are the manual adjust sieve switches located on the rear frame for the top and bottom sieve and on the center frame for the pre-sieve. You can use these switches for part of the sieve calibration procedure and cleaning purposes. At eye level at the very rear is the extra chop swath board switch for positioning the boards to the required angle. Especially useful for gaining access to the engine platform. All these switches are of course mirrored on the in-cab control arm. Open the tool cupboard and you will find additional switches and a fuse box. The operator's manual will explain in detail what the fuses and relays are for. With the three switches located in this tool cupboard, again mirrored on the in-cab control arm, you can make adjustments, changes or just check that the electrics are working. They are the cage vane position switch, the residue swath to chop rear door switch and the integral chop to swath or high low speed switch. Accessing the left side threshing and cleaning area is gained from here. Standing on the step, remove the white side panels and lay them to one side. The rotor cage, concave adjustment motor, cage vane adjustment system and upper cleaning shoe can all be viewed and inspected for crop setup and maintenance purposes. And finally, you will find a water container mounted on the guard with easy access for hand washing purposes. Always remember that more comprehensive information, including lubrication specifications, can be found in the operator's manual, which should be read prior to harvest operations, maintenance and repairs. Thank you for watching and have a great season.